guys, I'm Shelly, welcome back to my channel and the Christmas erotica reading vlog? Is that what we're calling it? Possibly. So this comes from my friend Kathy, who uh, I believe last year was house sitting for a friend, decided to drink a whole bottle of wine and find free Christmas erotica because apparently that is something that exists. She got the idea from her friend Rebecca, who every, I believe, Christmas Eve drinks a bottle of wine and reads a book and gets drunk. Which, to be honest, sounds a really good way of spending Christmas Eve. If you're on your own, get drunk, read a book. Only this time it's going to be erotica and it's not getting drunk, I'm afraid. I would love to say watch me slowly get completely rat assed and read Christmas erotica, but I can't drink. So I will be drinking tea. I currently have lemon, ginger and manuka honey tea because I am under the weather, what is new, and I'm going to find some erotica to review at Christmas and obviously the erotica will be Christmas themed. I mean, it's gonna, it's gonna go bonkers, let me put that down before I drop it. So, to be able to read some Christmas erotica, we have to find some Christmas erotica and being that I'm having real trouble reading at the moment, I'm gonna go on Audible. I'm going to find some audiobook Christmas erotica. I'm really going to regret this. Oh, 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 there's options, people. There, There is, oh God, there's loads of options. Okay. I didn't think there was going to be. Let's click on the first one. See what we get. Naughty or nice? Christmas erotica stories edited by Alison Tyler. Okay, what, what's, what's the summary? Give us, give us a summary. A blazing hot feast of holiday erotica, sure to jingle sleigh bells and curl mistletoe. Okay. I can't even read the summary. This is why I use Audible and why I listen to audiobooks. I'm so dys dyslexic. Dysle I can't even say dyslexic. And I'm not even drunk. This is going so well. I haven't even started drinking my tea yet. Plentant with visions of sugar plums, big juicy candy canes and stockings eager to be filled. Naughty or Nice is an irresistible collection of holiday erotica to make anyone wish the season of giving lasted all year long. Why do I get the feeling this is going to be hilarious? Okay, so we're going to get that one. So I think that's like a few uh, Christmas erotica stories put together and that's five hours and ten minutes long. That might be a bit long. That's what she said. Oh, here's one by J.S. Scott. I think I know that name as an author. It's three hours and 21 minutes long. The Billionaire's Christmas. And the picture, if I can show you on here, can I get this up? We have a grey tie. I'm thinking Fifty Shades. I'm thinking that this is gonna go a little bit, it's a Sinclair novella. Oh, so apparently there's a series called The Billionaire and this is a Christmas novella of it. So obviously I haven't read all the other books but this is apparently a book that comes before all the other books so I don't have to have read the other ones. Uh, the Sinclairs is the series apparently. Let's have a look. Oh yes we, we have an eccentric billionaire, we love them in erotica. <clears throat> oh even better, called an eccentric beast by civilians of, um, of uh, Amsport? Amsport? Was that a place? Amsport, Maine. Handsome billionaire Grady Sinclair, now there's the name, stays isolated in his mansion on the private peninsula. So Basically, this is going to be Beauty and the Beast. Uh, yes, this is going to be Beauty and the Beast. The arrangement suits Grady just fine, until an angelic woman rings his doorbell, awakening his dormant passion with a fearlessness. This is definitely Beauty and the Beast. I think that's definite. Let, let's have a retelling of Beauty and the Beast, erotic Christmas style, shall we? So I think I'm going to go with The Christmas Billionaire by J.S. Scott and Naughty or Nice Christmas Erotica Stories by... A bunch of people edited by Alison Tyler. That's that that should that should that should keep me going. I mean, how else am I gonna spend Christmas? I am stressed. Yeah. Okay. Merry Christmas. Chin chin. Where's my tea? Just on the just on the tinge of burning. I will leave links to everything that I'm reading down below in case you feel like joining in, and also uh, to Kathy and Rebecca and. Um, hmm, Enjoy my brain melting from Christmas erotica. Okay, first of all, welcome to my bed where I rightly belong. Uh, no, normally I'm lying down. Um, so I'm starting with J.S. Scott's The Billionaire's Christmas. And um, 
This is the beginning of it and I really hope I don't get censored or, or cut off. <laughs> it sounds like the beginning of a Hallmark film. <laughs> I find this very, very pleasing. That is all. I was right the first time around when I said the music sounds like a Hallmark film. You have our main character, whose name I've now completely blanked on, should have written it down. Um, used to be something in the corporate world, didn't like it, moved back home to a small town where she now runs a charity youth centre. Fell for a con man who nicked all the money for the youth centre two weeks before Christmas. Oh no, what's she going to do? So she has to go to the local eccentric billionaire named Brady, who um, is known for being a bit antisocial. He thinks she's a hooker because his brother now and again sends him hookers because he because they think he needs to get laid. Um, and she's jealous of the denim that is cupping his ass. I mean, if you were going to be jealous of anything, why not denim? Okay. Right. Yes. I'm here for it. So we have a decent proposal. He will give a, a million pounds to the youth centre if she shags him. And apparently she's gonna. But I'm listening to it. I generally thought I'd missed a whole section because they're going from a conversation in the kitchen about the fact that he hates Christmas and she loves it to shagging. What? I mean, did I just miss something? How? <laughs> this is like an explanation is needed. Women don't just drop their knickers because a guy gets close to them. I mean, they might, but that came out of nowhere. <laughs> Apparently he's wanted her since he first saw her on her ass in front of his front door. And she tastes like ambrosia. What? One, who the hell tastes like ambrosia? And two, what is ambrosia? Is it like a rice pudding? She tastes like rice pudding. This Brady fellow, he's claiming her as his. Uh, his inner monologue is, she is mine. No man can go anywhere near her. I must cover her with my scent. Okay, alarming. And now her ex-boyfriend has just shown up, who is the guy that nicked all the money in the first place, with a gun pointed at her head, and apparently he's not going to prison, so he's going to take her down with him and kill himself and her. Which is very much Fifty Shades of Grey, Anastasia being kidnapped and a gun pointed at her. So this is basically... <laughs> A condensed version of Fifty Shades with less whipping. Oh no, he's been shot and injured and she must help him have a shower. Oh dearie me, what do they possibly do? Enter the line, his fingers moved from her anus to her clit and back again. I'm sorry, that's unhygienic and that's how you get thrush. I'm just saying. It took me 33 years to get a Christmas miracle and I'm not giving you up now. In the space of this short book... He's been shot. She almost drowned by going out in the snow and slipping off a dock into freezing cold water. Just have a nap, people. I mean, seriously, I've never heard of just napping. I fully expect them to be married by the end of this. Uh, he's finally shagging her by the sounds of it, but... <laughs> That's just... Uh, I'll get on with it. As predicted, with ten minutes left to go, he proposes. They've only had sex once. I mean, that's one hell of an orgasm. This is bonkers. Book number two, Naughty or Nice, which is going to be a bunch of short Christmas erotica stories. The opening is, I don't need to ask, do I? You're already naughty. You're listening to this. I, I love a good erotica that starts talking to its reader. I appreciate the honesty. I really do. So the first story in our naughty or nice mix is... I've written it down because I, you know I'm not going to remember. So I'm, right, I'm making erotica notes in my diary. So one, in a couple of years time, if I ever go to read this diary, that should be interesting. Or if I die and for some reason my family decide to read my diary, hi. You're going to get erotica notes. So, The Queen of Christmas by Andrea Dale. First off, her name's Shelley. So that threw me. And uh, one of the first lines 
is that her next door neighbour made her panties damp from the start. What is it with Americans and the word panties? I don't understand it. It doesn't, it doesn't do it for me. It just sounds sort of cringy and weird, but they always use the word panties. I'm much more of a get your knickers off woman. But then knickers, I suppose you could you could put that towards like your granny's knickers, which would be wrong. I might be overanalyzing this. What's the best word then? Pants? I don't think this is what the author wants me focusing on. And yet, that's what's happening. This naughty or nice series of stories, there's some serious kink going on. I mean, to start with, representation. We have a gay story. We have a lesbian story. We have all of the kinks. I mean, there's a lot of BDSM in this. This one went up a notch from erotica to full-on kink. One of the stories being called Fezziwig's Balls, which I quite appreciated. Claire and her husband go to this Dickensian-themed ball every year and decide to stay in a hotel and have a different fantasy every year, which actually is quite cool. And... um this year, it's she's dressed up to the nines in full corset and everything for both her husband and everybody else's pleasure. Yes, there's a lot of corset rustling going on. Another called Good Little Girl by Shannon Germain. Here we have our lesbian representation, thank you very much. Kay finds out that her girlfriend has a new job, and that job is to be Santa at a kink party, or basically at a lesbian party. So um, her partner has left her little girl's outfit on the bed and told her to come to this party where she finds that her girlfriend is dressed as Santa and she goes and sits on her knee and then there is a dildo involved and blimey that that turned really quickly there was a lot of candy cane references in that one but I appreciate it it was quite funny but there was one called Nog by Joel Nicholson which is a gay guy goes home from college for Christmas he came out the year before to his parents and they're not keen so they've got like, they're going to get the thick around. They're really going to, you know, have a go at him for being gay. So he decides to jerk off in, into the eggnog before the Christmas party. To be honest, that one made me quite crazy. I don't think that was quite my kink, but it, it, whatever, whatever floats your boat. The floating, just no, no, I couldn't. No, that just made me way too nauseous. And I'm not even halfway through the book yet, so... <laughs> because I'm listening to it on audio, every story is about half an hour long. So, um, yeah, we're going through the kinks. There's been a BDSM story about three ghosts of Christmas, present, future and past as well. So um, I, I think this is going to get kinkier as I go on. I mean, it's one way to spend Christmas. I don't know how long I've been reading this book now. But... The kink level just, just, just keeps being raised. I mean, we've just had uh, a gay couple who are in a non-monogamous partnership. One of the guys didn't have a name, but his partner was called Glenn, and he comes home from work, and um, Glenn decides to give him a blowjob, only to find that his dick tastes like mulled wine. So he's just like, why exactly does your dick taste of mulled wine? And then goes to have a taste session, basically, <laughs> of pulling, like, like he's a proper guy who, 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 Describes wine for a living. I don't know the name of what they are, but he's like, I, I'm getting some spice. I'm getting some... Just like, oh my God. And then they shove candy canes where, where the sun don't shine. <laughs> I'm just... I mean... It's brilliant. Absolutely. Hilariously. The jingle, bell, jingle bells have been put in all sorts of places. Hanging from places. Stuck in places. It's like... Why is my wife jingling as she walks around the house? Oh, because she has jingle Benoit balls. And it's just like... <laughs> Why are you jingling, dear? Where, where exactly are these jingle bells? <laughs> oh, this is taking my mind off of life and I appreciate it. I definitely picked the right mug to finish this book on. <laughs> got weirder so the one of the last stories in this book and i think i've got to say the one of the weirdest i mean they've all been pretty weird the candy cane one really kind of threw me i'm telling you but then you had a story called dangerous fruitcake by anonymous i mean 
dangerous fruitcake for a start as the name of an erotic story quite funny but you have a woman who um every year gets a fruitcake sent to her by her nan and uh, her partner decides that when it arrives it's just the right kind of weight and and texture to spank her with again thrush because the fruitcake falls apart and then it's all over his hands and his hands go all over her and inside her and you're just thinking but sugar going into a vagina no stop doing this <laughs> so much yeast infections and thrush throughout this book you know that's not what the authors are going for but th that's that's all I'm getting from this book is thrush <laughs> just like way too much yeast growing terrible so that was naughty or nice naughty apparently I do have my mug that that goes along with it if you like your Christmas with a lot of kink this is the book for you yeah I think that's the end of the video <laughs> I have no idea what has happened over the last week besides a lot of yeast infections and a lot of kink and a lot of candy canes where they shouldn't be so yes i hope you have enjoyed this i hope you're having a very merry christmas season <laughs> a, 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 a festive fun season some kink bring it on um i will leave links to the books down below if you wish to read them i don't know how to end this now i'm just baffled by the fruit cake and the amount of yeast infections and it's really bugging me i can't get my head past it I will see you for another video, possibly before the new year or not, because I might just sleep. So, Merry Christmas, chin chin, have a good one, season's greetings and all the cuddles. Hey, just why? Why?